of these high-powered programs could be the next Pac-10 champion. 12th ranked USC has the third best defense in the nation. 5th ranked Oregon has the second best total offense in the nation. Runs right through a tackle. USC and Oregon, Trojan pride versus duck power. 12th ranked USC, 5th ranked Oregon, next. It is the most anticipated game in the 41 year history of Austin Stadium here on the campus of the University of Oregon in Eugene. The Oregon Ducks, they feel they've got a statement to make today. USC, they feel they have something to prove as well. That's what makes it on this Kyocera College Football Saturday as the USC Trojans come calling on the hometown Oregon Ducks. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, Petros Papadakis. And what a day we've got for you here on FSN. Our biggest day ever also. Three games, more than 10 hours, and are we going to answer a whole bunch of questions? Mythological, epic battles, Barry, throughout the Pac-10 today. All of them right here on FSN. And none bigger than this one in Austin Stadium. I can't wait. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be unbelievable. Well, let's talk about Oregon's offense, first of all. They run the spread offense. They run it better than anybody in the country. And in this case, you not only have to stop one guy, you got to stop two guys. That's what makes it tough. They're like watching an action movie with explosions and bodies flying all over the place. Dennis Dixon, beautiful, finesse, composure. He's having a renaissance year. He's running around. He's passing at a 70% clip. Jonathan Stewart, the perfect mix of power and speed. He's the best running back in the pack 10 Doesn't get any better than these two guys. And as good as that offense is, they got to face the number three defense in the nation. USC can really bring it defensively. Great combination of linebackers that are all starting this game for the first time in a long time. Ray Malaluga, he's aggressive. He's crazy. He frightens people. Keith Rivers is a big time player, and he's leading this team in tackles. Very fast play making ball hawk on the edge and Cushing might be the best of them all he is finally healthy these guys have their work cut out for him this afternoon versus that high-powered Oregon Ducks and here come the Oregon Ducks before a sellout crowd and a crowd that has anticipated this game for a long long time Jim Watson what Barry, USC arrives in Eugene with a lot of questions on their mind, the biggest of which, of course, how will Mark Sanchez respond to the magnitude of this college football game? His first two starts a little shaky against Arizona, much better last week against the Fighting Irish, and Pete Carroll told us last night that that start at South Bend has given him the confidence. He knows that Mark Sanchez is ready to go. There's also a legacy for this kind of thing. Matt Leinert got his first nod on the road at Auburn. John David Booty made his bones at Arkansas. So Mark Sanchez is not alone today. He's got his History and the weather on his side 62 degrees blue skies zero chance of rain two great teams and 10 hours of football Barry Petros where would you rather be I'm telling you and when was the last time you heard that forecast up here Pete Carroll of course as always he's very chatty right up to kickoff time and uh, if he's nervous he never shows it I'll tell you that he prepares his team well with a lot of energy they come out and they have a very relaxed walk through you always expect the USC team to be ready to play and very loose and they are just that there's a look at Mike Bellotti Bellotti very confident SC incidentally uh, SC won the toss and deferred so they will take the ball to start the second half they will kick it away to Oregon Beater will be the kicker Brown and Crenshaw the deep man for Oregon Stewart normally is on the deep team to return but because he's going to carry so much of a load with Jeremiah Johnson out he will not return kicks today this is Crenshaw four yard line Crenshaw fumbles SC has it just like that well there is a start of course that Oregon absolutely did not want and Mike Bellotti and everybody else talking about the fact they must take care of the football spit it up on the first offensive not even the first offensive play but on the kickoff backup wide receiver Brad Walker causing this fumble Crenshaw sophomore out of Southern California this Oregon team is great when they don't turn the ball over and play perfectly on special teams and that's his own player before Walker even gets there causing that fumble very tough play that's Andiel Brown causing that fumble Washington will be the setback behind Sanchez ball at the 21-yard line Sanchez going for it all right now and it is almost intercepted getting a hand on that ball was Patrick Chung almost had a pick let's take a look at the Keosara lineups first of all for the USC Trojans we talked about Mark Sanchez at the quarterback position but the guy that he looks to in crucial situations not his wideouts this year so much 
Fred Davis, outstanding tight end, getting better and getting more noticed every week. Listen to the crowd. They are involved. Second half. This is Washington. Washington gets a little room down close to the 15-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about five and a late flag. Things seem to happen faster when the crowd is going wild here in Autzen Stadium. When you're on that opposing team, there is a frantic nature in your heart when you listen to this crowd. Personal foul on the Trojans. You make mistakes like that, you're going to see the late hit right here. And that's Shiloh Rashal. He's been injured. He's starting a game. That was a big plus for the Trojans having him back, but that is not a big plus. A play like that, the junior out of Compton, California, Shiloh Rochelle having a great year, starting out this game on the wrong foot for the USC Trojans. Six defensive backs for the Ducks. Third down and 20. Just a three-man rush and a screen this time. Plenty of room for McKnight at the 20. Trying to get outside 15, and he's going to be just short of the first down at about the 13-yard line. Fourth down and one. The Trojans will go. The last six fourth down attempts against this Oregon defense have failed. Big moment early in this game. Two tight ends, Davis and Thompson. Empty backfield. Give to McKnight, and McKnight is going to be stopped short. John Bacon makes the call. They brought McKnight on a reverse off the wing, and he is stopped short of the first down. Listen to that crowd, Barry. Big time play for the Oregon defense. Aliotti's defense stepping up in a big way, but very questionable call to run an end around when you have one yard to go for a guy that normally runs sideways as a young freshman. McKnight has got to find a way to get upfield quickly on that play. And like you said, Bacon stepping up and making a good play on the true freshman. Seven straight stops on fourth down now for the Oregon Duck defense. Dixon with an empty backfield. Now they bring Stewart and line him up in the backfield. They'll give you a lot of different looks. Quick toss this time on a screen to Garrett Strong, and Strong will get a couple, no more. It's the quick screen. Here's the defense and the Keosara lineups for the Oregon Duck, or rather the offense. Dennis Dixon, of course, is the quarterback of this Duck team. Jason Williams, he's their deep threat. They had a whole bunch of them, but injuries have depleted the wide receiver core for the Ducks. It's Lewis coming in motion. And Dixon on the keeper, trying to get outside, cannot do it. Great pursuit that time by Kevin Ellison and a loss of about three. Keosara lineups defensively for the USC Trojans pick your poison here. Many people feel seven first round draft choices on this team. Here's one of them, Lawrence Jackson. I think the onus really is going to fall on the defensive ends in how they can stop that Oregon option. The key word here, Barry, is discipline for the USC defense. And you just saw it right there. Oregon gives you a lot of looks, and there's a lot of guys running in every direction. You have to watch that offensive line to see where the ball is going. Third down and nine. Dixon straight back this time. Has time. Now he's going to run. He's got room. That's a good block for the 20. First down and out of bounds. Jonathan Stewart gave him a great block. He put a big hit on Ray Malaluga, who's a big-time player. 11-yard run for Dennis Dixon. And you see how smart he is. He gets out of bounds immediately before this USC defense can hit him. I think that's a key for USC. They've got to punish Dixon. You see the great block there by Stewart before Harris can come up and make the stopper. Put some kind of hit on Dixon. He's out of bounds with a first down. At the 25-yard line, Dixon this time going to go up. Now he reverses his field. He can run again. He will with a 30. Gets down close to another first down, maybe about a half yard short at the 34-yard line. Let's take a look at our KFC scouting report. It'll give you a little bit of a comparison here of the run offense of Oregon and the run defense of USC. And uh, again, today something's got to give. And something will give here. Oregon's got to keep running the ball. Dennis Dixon's got to do it. He's got to get down and not take hits. And, and Stewart's got to punish this defense because he'll be there in the fourth quarter if they if they let him get involved early. And so far, Dixon has done exactly the right thing on the keeper again. Again, he gets down. Mike Bellotti told us he's going to have a first down here. We're going to go to the sideline right now with Jim Watson. Whitey. Well, boys, obviously, Dennis Dixon is a focal point in this game. 
Pete Carroll said he wanted to smack him in the mouth early, maybe slow him down like they did with Jake Locker against Washington. And remember what Mike Bellotti said. He has three instructions for Dennis Dixon when he runs the football. First down, touchdown, or get down. And he has done two of the three so far. He has carried the ball four straight times. Dixon this time will put it up, and that's a real miscommunication. It's right now they feel they really only have one guy, Jason Williams, and another guy who we will see this afternoon, Terrence Scott, a JC transfer who was going to redshirt. They took the redshirt off him last week. There are a lot of guys that you can plug into this offense at wide receiver. They're going to put up numbers, but Dixon obviously most comfortable with Coleman and Pacinger and Williams. Two of those guys are out now, and he's working with some new guys. Four wide receiver. Here's that quick screen again. And Strong will get it across the 40 to the 41, but it's going to be third and long. Dixon. He's got all day to throw it. Now he does, and the ball is caught for a first down. Going to be Aaron Flugrad, a guy who just catches everything in his area. He's not going to beat you with a lot of speed, runs great routes, catches the football. Coaches kids. As you know, his dad, Robin Barry, is a wide receiver coach. He's also worked at Washington State and Arizona State. And his son knows how to find holes in that secondary. Great job by the Oregon offensive line. Thomas Williams ended up making that tackle. USC tried to rush for there and get a rush with it, and they could not. They're going to have to start blitzing if they want to get any kind of pressure on Dixon when he drops straight back like that on third and long. It is a very good and a very experienced offensive line that the Ducks have. Dixon straight back. Now he'll tuck it away and run. He'll get to the 40, inside the 40 to the 38, close to another Oregon first down. Keith Rivers on the stop. Well, Dixon, of course, guy who is a two-sport athlete, even though Oregon doesn't have a baseball team, he plays professional baseball in the Atlanta Braves organization, on track to graduate in three and a half years with a 3-4 grade point average. Only class is taking his year is billiards. I didn't know they offered that. Teaches you angles. And a catch made for a first down this time by Terrence Scott. We talked about Scott. They were going to redshirt him. They took the redshirt off last week, so this is only his second game. It's a J.C. transfer out of College of the Canyons. So it'll be first down, and again, they go, as always, with a no huddle. And here's Dixon on a keeper. Cuts it inside, gets inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. And I'll tell you, this, this is a thing of beauty to, to watch. It certainly is just the misdirection and the way things are run and how they stretch, stretch, stretch and go upfield. That time, April Spicer catching up. And the Trojans not doing a bad job of getting to the quarterback and tackling Jonathan Stewart, but not before they gain big yards. And they're right back at the line of scrimmage, ready to run another play. Here's Dixon. He's going to get some room again. Goes out of bounds at about the 25. And that time, you saw Griffin having to run, run faster than he's ever run in his life, though he is a pretty quick young freshman just to get Dixon, just to edge him out of bounds. And this will tire you out. Look at the effort that Griffin's got to make just to get him out of bounds. And Dixon does not take the hit. He's in fantastic shape. He can do this all day. And USC's defense is getting tired. Third down and three. They give it to Stewart. Stewart, first down and more. Lip legs up. SC defender takes it all the way to the 11-yard line. What a great effort by Stewart. Gary Harris trying to get to the legs when you have a big giant guy and you see the beautiful zone that Oregon's running just clearing everybody out. When you have a guy that big going upfield and you're a corner like Gary Harris, only 180 pounds, you try to get to his legs, but Stewart is just so fantastic on his feet, just so able to jump and move and get outside that he evades that tackle and falls forward. Gain of 15, 11th play of the drive, the ball at the 11-yard line, first down. This is Crenshaw for the first time, inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Jeremiah Johnson, of course, injured a couple of weeks ago. On comes Andre Crenshaw, another talented back. Yeah, he did not have a bad game. Pretty big yards, 115 versus UW. And like I said earlier, the wide receiver situation is almost the same. When you have an offense that's going this well, and Dennis Dixon's doing this well, you have stalwart like Stewart starting, you can plug other guys in and they get confidence because there's open space for them to run it. 
Stewart back in the ball game. This is Stewart inside the five. Down to about the three yard line. Might have gotten to the two. Well, watch how he gets his shoulder pads facing toward the end zone. You see that, how he gets upfield and then just starts moving those big legs toward his goal. When you ever get those shoulder pads pointing the right direction, good things happen. Third down and two. And this time, straight up the middle into the end zone goes Dixon. that DeMarco Farr was talking about before the game started. Malaluga is going to have to be more disciplined in this game and look at the offensive line as opposed to peeking in the backfield. That time, sucked away. Dixon takes it to the house. It's in 50 seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter. Oregon leads at 7 to nothing. Take a look at the Kawasaki scoring drive. We talked about it a moment ago. Four minutes and 24 seconds. Importantly, Oregon is rushed in this game for 79 yards. With two minutes and 50 seconds remaining to go in the first quarter, USC's average per game against the rush, 64. This kick is dribbled down to Johnson. Johnson gets in the gap, tries to take to the outside down at the 26-yard line. So now the onus falls on the USC offense. Sanchez gave to Washington, got a gap across the 30 to about the 32, maybe the 33-yard line, pick up about seven. Tukuafu on the stop for the Ducks. Well, they tried Joe McKnight early in this game on fourth and one. I don't think you're going to see that again. Chauncey Washington, a much more physical back, a senior out of Torrance, California, a guy that knows how to go upfield. And you're absolutely right, Barry. The onus now is on the USC offense. 13th play drive for the Ducks. A lot of minutes taken off the clock. That defense is absolutely tired. They're all sitting on the bench. This offense has got to pick them up and get the first down. Second down, 11. Give this time to McKnight. McKnight's got a gap at midfield. Got one man to beat at the 30. Still on his feet. He's gone. And a flag is down. Flag is down back at the 42-yard line. Very tough call for the Trojans at that point. You saw the great move by McKnight, the stop move. They called that one on Drew Radovich, who's had some sciatica problems. He's been injured all week. The right tackle, Drew Radovich, is charged with the holding. Here you see McKnight just taking off downfield. Deceptive speed. He's like a glider. Matthew Harper's the guy that got basically used on the move. And there you see Radovich. Tough to look at the other guys in the huddle after a penalty like that. There's Shiloh Rashal blocking. Can't really see much of a hold there. Couldn't see the hold, so maybe it was a little bit away from the play itself. Back to pass this time in trouble, and down goes Sanchez. And blowing in was Jerome Boyd. And with that, we come to the end of the first quarter. Seven to nothing ball game as we prepare to start the second quarter. And here is the hold. You're going to see Radovich, and he is going to have a hold of Ajimon. You see that. Does not let go. Ajimon would have made that play on McKnight. That's a good call by the officials. Radovich with the hold. Vacates a touchdown by USC, and they got the ball. Third and long. Third and 23. And the game is to McKnight again, and McKnight gets a little room. Across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. He got a little bit of it back. Let's go down to the sideline once more. Jim Watson, this crowd, always a big factor. No exception today. Absolutely, Barry. We're keeping one eye on the game, but we're keeping our ears on the crowd here at Austin Stadium, which is considered the loudest venue in the Pac-10. They call it the Thunderdome, so we brought the decibel meter today. Now, just to give you an idea, a Beverly Brook is like 50, a Jumbo Jets 140. I had it on on that last sack of Mark Sanchez. These guys are pegging out at about 112 right now. And let's see if somebody touched this football. This could be USC's ball, and it is. What a break. 
That's the second special teams turnover this afternoon by Oregon. Both caused by their own guys. And you're gonna see that one hits the foot of Garen Strong. And the Trojans get all over it. Very unfortunate play for the Ducks. Garrett Strong, that ball right off his foot, and it looks like Malaluga is the one that comes up with the football. Another giant break for USC and a potential momentum swing in this game if their offense, who only has one first down so far in this game, can capitalize. Give us to Washington. Washington gets a gap. Running over people down close to the 10-yard line. They'll mark it inside the 12. It'll be second down. Walter Thurman again on the tackle, but all of a sudden Trojans started to open up some pretty good sized holes. And Shiloh Rashal has just come out of the game, looks like with a shoulder injury. Tiny Malu has replaced him. Shiloh Rashal, big time player for the USC offensive line, and they were very happy to have him back, but it looks like he's out for the time being. Second down and a long two. Davis split to the far side. Give us to the fullback, Kabili, and he's going to be close to a first down. And I believe he's going to have it. This is a team that historically has been built largely on a tailback and wide receivers. And this year, really, when they really need a play, they're looking tight end fullback. First down and goal just inside the 10-yard line. Play fake, Sanchez will throw, looks for Davis. Now he's going to roll away. Throws for Davis, too tall. And USC has made a habit of doing that on first down. We saw it in this game right with the original turnover. They will drop Sanchez back and try to get the ball to Davis. There you see Boyd with the pressure. Good defense all the way down the field. Dale Thompson trying to get open. No go. Two tight ends, two wide outs now. McKnight, the tailback. On second down. This is McKnight, nothing to do it. Stopped in the backfield. That was a blown play. You have two relatively inexperienced players in there in a stadium like this. Mark Sanchez and McKnight going the wrong way, and now you see Shallow Shaw coming back out on the football field. That is good news for USC fans. Loss of about four on the play. That'll be third down and goal back at the 13-yard line. Abili is the lone setback. And McKnight comes in motion. Straight back goes Sanchez. Deep drop. In trouble. Has to step up. Looks to the end zone and throws it. Knocked away. Patrick Turner might have made the catch, but he was out of bounds. Great defensive stand by the Oregon Ducks after a turnover. They responded well twice. You see the pressure coming for Sanchez. That ball never had a chance to be completed inbound, but a great catch by Patrick Turner nonetheless. And the Trojans doing a great job of getting the ball upfield with their run game, but when it got down to it, the first down pass kind of set him back. And it is on its way, and it is good. So USC on the board. Mary Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, seven to three. Oregon leads 10-27 left. Oregon has overcome itself so far. They sure have to open the game. The special teams turnover, but the great play by John Bacon on fourth down. Stops Joe McKnight. Here, Garrett Strong, ball careens off his foot. USC again, able to capitalize just a little bit, but not as much as they wanted to. They have held USC after those two turnovers. The first one, four plays, only 23 yards, and then the second one, nine plays, over 20 yards, uh, just a little bit over 20 yards. That is that is great defense by the Oregon Ducks, snatching back momentum here. This is going to be Stewart out of his own end zone. And Stewart's going to be stopped short of the 20-yard line at about the 17. First time the Ducks have had the football here in the second quarter. Dixon going to throw over the middle. Got a man caught by Dixon. Dixon all the way to the 41-yard line. Making the 46, 45-yard gain. When you talk about
Scott versatility. Dixon has rushed and passed for at least one touchdown in each game this season. He's already got a rushing touchdown. This one, almost a touchdown throw to Dixon is tight end right down the middle of the field. Just a great play, and what an explosive offense the Ducks had. Dixon straight back again. Now he's going to run. Well, trying to take it to the outside. Look how easily he got around. The Trojan defender takes it to the 43-yard line. That's just a heck of a play, and he got some help once again on a nice block by Jonathan Stewart, a pickup of eight. Dixon straight back again. Throws, and Williams had to hit him right in the hands. He couldn't hang on. Harry Harris was in the area. Middle of the field has been pretty good to the Ducks, and that one really did hit Williams right in the hands. Unable to come up with it. Dixon to Stewart. Stewart outside, and he'll get the first down. All on individual effort. Taylor Mays, the big, giant safety. 235 pounds. There's Rivers. But Jonathan Stewart just too dangerous when he gets that body headed in the right direction. That's his game, and he plays it well. Inside the 40-yard line. Blitz comes this time. They pick it up. Dixon with all day open in the middle of the field. This flu grab. First down. It was Stewart on the catch for the first down. Just found himself in space. Well, it looked like flu grab. That's a guy that finds spaces in a zone. You don't expect this from a tailback, but Stewart able to get in that zone, show the quarterback his numbers. You don't see tailbacks doing that, going up and making that type of catch with their arms above their heads. They usually weigh much, wear much bigger shoulder pads. Jonathan Stewart with a giant play for the Ducks. First down at the 24-yard line. Dixon again over the middle and complete. That time Jason Williams ran it out. And I think Dixon was thinking he was running a post. He got 30 seconds to make something happen here. And I trust this offense has the ability to do it. 30 seconds left in the first half. Ducks lead it by four. Dixon going to the corner of the end zone for Williams. No. Incomplete, could not quite hang on. There was a lot of pushing going on, too. Perfectly thrown ball by Dixon right in the hands of Williams. Kerry Harris is there, and like you said, it got pretty physical between the two guys, slapping hands and wrists. That's a ball that could have been caught, would have been very close. For Oregon, so they, the Ducks have to think about a first down. They still have two timeouts. They come with a blitz again. Dixon had to unload early. And Dixon that time had to throw the ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to. The Trojans are starting to get what they want. You're going to see Cedric Ellis coming in with a hit. Lawrence Jackson and Dixon finally taking a few hits. Seemingly, it's the first time this season that he's been hit by a very fast and angry USC defense. He'll be a 41-yarder. He's got plenty on it, and it is good. Very solid football on both sides. All right, right now, let's take it out of Jim Watson. Why did Barry, we heard so much about USC's defense coming into this game. Mike, your defense looks terrific. Our defense is doing a great job. We've put them in really difficult situations. They've given up one field goal. That's pretty unbelievable, considering the fumble on the first kickoff and then the, the ball being touched on the other. So I'm really pleased and proud of them. We just got to keep the ball on offense. I think we can wear them down a little bit if we keep the ball. You ran the ball early in the game. Now you're passing it. You think you have SC off balance a little bit? Well, we got to try to keep them off balance. I, we got to try to wear them down. Our, our tempo usually wears on guys in the second half. We keep the ball. We're going to try to be balanced. I think you have to do it against a great defense. Appreciate the time. Mike Bellotti with a lead at halftime. Keep in mind, guys, Oregon's defense, number 68 in the country coming in. USC, number three. We're welcome you back to Hudson Stadium as we prepare to start the second half. 10-3 to three ball game, Oregon over USC. I'm Barry Tompkins. That guy right there is Petros Papadakis. And... Uh, P. Oregon put up all the numbers that they usually do in the first half, 224 yards. They average 550 for a game, but really there's only one important stat. And that is the touchdown scored in this game. And so far, Oregon's the only one that has put it in the end zone, but it's only happened one time. Oregon's offense has been a joy to watch, and frankly, so is the USC defense. They've been running around the field, doing some good things, and holding up that firepower that the Ducks possess. Offensively, USC is going to have to start scoring touchdowns in this game because Oregon's offense is waiting to explode. They have got to open it up with Mark Sanchez as their quarterback, or they're not going to win this game. 
And that is the bottom line. They're going to get the football first to start the second half. Pete Carroll and his staff historically make great adjustments, although I have to think that this Oregon offense is a very difficult team to adjust to. Evenson drives this one. It's going to be Johnson at about the five-yard line. 15-20. Little gap to the 30, 35, and dragged down from behind. A good return by Johnson. Trojans on first down. They give it to McKnight. McKnight slipped by the first man, but not the second. And we go to the sideline. We don't ever want to slip by Jim Watson. Waddy? Barry, I was actually in the USC locker room. I had a chance to talk with Pete Carroll as he ran out to the sideline. You know, he's always an optimistic guy, but he did admit those two turnovers and the stop. They got to get more points than just three. Said defensively, got to stop the uh, quarterback run. Just too many easy yards on first and second down. And then offensively, he said, if we don't run the ball effectively in the second half, we cannot win this football game. SC, 55 yards rushing in the first half. Not very good. And started out with a rush of three yards here. Chauncey Washington is now the tailback. And Sanchez will go up in trouble. And throws for Washington. Just got that off before taking the sack. Fatete was there right in Sanchez's grill. Good play by Fatete, senior out of Bedford, Oregon. 310 pounds getting on Mark Sanchez. And also a very good job by Sanchez finding a way to get rid of that ball at the feet of Chauncey Washington and not take that sack. Just three of seven and third down conversions in the ballgame for USC. Desmond Reed in it running back for the first time. Two tight ends. Sanchez, late blitz comes. Sanchez throws, got a man wide open as Turner. First down into Oregon territory at the 38-yard line. Walter Thurman wasn't anywhere to be found. That's what USC is going to have to do more of in this football game. Not only winning on third down, but letting the strong arm quarterback drop back and find people and throw that ball downfield and take some chances. If USC cannot do that or does not do that in this game, if they don't call those plays, they're going to have a hard time. Gain of 22, longest play of the ball game for the Trojans. First down at the 37 of Oregon. Washington. Got about a yard. <laughs> 36, second down and nine. Play fake, Sanchez to throw. Now he has to roll away from pressure, wants his receivers to come back to him. And finally, throws it for Davis, and Davis cannot make the catch. Mark Sanchez trying to direct traffic with two or three guys in his face. You don't often see that. And we have seen him flushed out to the sideline and trying to make these spectacular throws. Matthew Harper there with very good coverage on the spectacular USC tight end. Brett Davis, who has not had a very big game thus far this afternoon. So third down and now the crowd again becomes a factor. Three wide outs. Stephon Johnson, the tailback. This is Johnson, and Johnson will be stopped well short at the 32-yard line. And so from here, if you think it's field goal, it's a 49-yarder. Patrick Chubb that time with a good tackle on the first carry. He's had a catch with the first carry of the afternoon for Stephon Johnson. Looks like USC's going to go, and you have to figure they were expecting to do that with a very conservative call on third down, and it looks now like Joe McKnight is going in for Stephon Johnson. And a flag falls, and I think that's going to be a freebie. Catch is made for a first down by Turner, and I'm quite sure one of the Ducks came across. And I think it was Nick Reed. By Mark Sanchez and Patrick Turner. What poise on fourth down. Defense, offside, penalties decline, first down. That'll take it down to the 11-yard line. 21-yard gain on the pass to Turner. He's had a 22-yarder and a 21-yarder on this drive. Sanchez standing strong and getting it to Patrick Turner, the junior out of Nashville, Tennessee. A guy Patrick Turner has came into USC with great expectations and hasn't quite lived up to him. A couple flashes here and there has had Patrick Turner, but certainly not like Mike Williams or Dwayne Jarrett or Steve Smith like they expect. So a first down at the 11-yard line. Huge fourth down play by the Trojans. 
McKnight goes in motion, creating an empty backfield. Straight back Sanchez over the middle. Catches made fumble. Ball is still loose and picked up by the Ducks. Jarris Bird has it, but I think they're going to call this play dead. Habili was the receiver, but I believe the officials are saying that the play was dead. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. Well, that was a bang bang play, and I'm not sure if they're going to be able to look at this, especially if that whistle blew. There's the throw. Habili never quite had it, was juggling that ball. That is the right call on the field. It's an incomplete pass. They're going to see it in slow motion. John Bacon closing in. And Avili did turn his head upfield, but never quite had that ball. Stephon oh. Johnson is the tailback. Alain Avili up on the wing. Now the shift. Short drop, Sanchez looking for someplace, throws. Ball is caught this time, but for very little gain. And he has been able to block pretty well, too, even though that's not the strongest part of his game. He's a runner, pass catcher, and then a blocker. That's pretty different than the USC normally have. So it'll be third down and eight. McKnight is now the tailback. Hazelton goes in motion. Sanchez deep drop. Going for the end zone. Jump ball, touchdown! Patrick Turner. <laughs> Willie Glasper doing what he could, but Turner, a big target at 6-5, came down with the ball, and what a factor he was on this drive. Three catches, including the touchdown. Stepping up huge is the young man out of Nashville, and Sanchez has found him, never really looks him off. Willie Glasper is the guy on the coverage, and Turner finding a way to use that big body, get between Glasper and the football and pull it down. Drive for point is up and good, and just like that, we are tied at 10. USC has tied the game. There's the guy who tied it. Turner, three catches on that last drive for 52 yards, and Sanchez, four of seven, 54 yards on our Kawasaki scoring drive, a 10-play drive, 62 yards. This is going to be Crenshaw at the goal line. Gap up the middle, and he couldn't quite get to it. Dragged down at the 22 yard line. Stewart and Crenshaw in the ball game now. And this time it's Dixon on the keeper, steps out of a tackle, now pitches to a tackle. <laughs> he pitched that ball to Jeff Schwartz. Well, I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> I've never seen a play like that. First, He's going to fake it to Stewart, then stop, and sucks in Lawrence Jackson, and when he does, pitches it out to Jeff Schwartz, the senior out of Pacific Palisades, California, 340 pounds. Here's Stewart with a first down and more to the 40-yard line, dishing up punishment. Perry Harris was given a straight arm by Stewart that knocked him about four feet out of bounds. Yeah, he does a lot of arm curls, I guess. He's got some guns, doesn't he? A gain of 15 and a... There's a blitz from the outside, and they give it to Stewart. Stewart will get it up to about the 42-yard line. Going to be a gain of about four on first down. And all the way up here in the booth, you can just feel the strength of Jonathan Stewart as he runs into the middle of this USC defense. Ray Mawaluga, strong guy in his own right, making that stop. Like a clash of the Titans in there, five yards past the line of scrimmage. Second down and six. This time he puts it in the belly of Stewart, keeps it himself, does Dixon, and picks up about three. Cedric Ellis on the stop, it'll be third down. Now Dixon started the game completing 12 of his first 13, and he hit one of his last six attempts in the first half, and he's come out looking pretty good running the ball, hasn't thrown in the second half yet. In his defense, though, he had a couple of drops. Put it up right here, and now he's in trouble. Scrambling. Now he's going to throw it away. Got outside the box, threw it away. Heady move by Dixon, but it's going to be fourth down. Great job by the USC defense that time, doing what they do best, which is swarm and use their speed. Lawrence Jackson leading the charge. 
they're doing a great job of containing Dixon right now. They're having to play zone in the secondary just to make sure that he doesn't get outside on them. And that time, Dixon unable to get outside the USC Trojans defense. Looks like they've adjusted pretty well so far here in the second half. And on fourth and three, they will punt the football. And this one will hit at the five-yard line and be down at the four. So a very effective punt that time. Trojans at their own five. Washington, right up the gut to the 12. Second down and three. They bring Davis split to the far side. Give it a fullback this time. And Havili is going to be a little short of the first down. About a yard short, it'll be third down. This is Avili, and Avili, I believe, is going to get the first down. And the ball might be loose in there. Oregon is saying they have it. They'll call from the officials. This will be a huge sequence if, in fact, it is ruled a fumble. I wouldn't want to be on the bottom there, Barry. That could be ugly. Oregon ball! This crowd is right back in it. Great opportunity for the Ducks to go ahead now with the turnover. The Trojans trying to catch Oregon off guard, getting quick to the line of scrimmage, trying to hit that fullback right away. Stanley Avili dead behind the center. And you see Avili stopped up, tripped by Bacon early. And as he's going down, that ball comes out. And I believe it was Will Tukwafu who came out of that pile with a football. You know, sometimes when you try to go quickly and get up to the line of scrimmage quickly, it hurts the offense a lot more than it hurts the defense. Here you're going to see the ball come out. It's down on the bottom there. Looked like Will Tukahafu not only came up with the ball, but knocked it loose. Well, a huge opportunity now for the Oregon Ducks. This is Stewart. Not much. Trojans really stepping up defensively. It seems that they have made the correct adjustments, but here with a short field and that spread offense, it's going to be very difficult for USC to stop Oregon from scoring. Cedric Ellis that time with the big stop. Mike Milani told us they need touchdowns in the red zone. Second out and 10. Ball on the 16-yard line. Stewart again with a big gap to the five. Sanchez steps up, throws, catch made by Turner, first down. The last two on Willie Glasper, the sophomore. Young kid out of Pittsburgh, California, only 184 pounds and under six feet. Turner has been using him up perfectly. Place ball, great catch by Patrick Turner, and he is starting to really step up in this football game. USC and Oregon, third down is completely and totally imperative if you want to win the football game. Doesn't matter if it's long. For short. First down at the 48-yard line now. 
Sanchez going up on first down. Now a shovel pass to Turner again, and Turner is surrounded at about the 48-yard line. Still not bad first down yard. He's almost five yards. Tukuafu makes the start. They already have John David Moody with the injured finger, and they don't need another injured quarterback. Six carries, or six catches, I should say, 84 yards now for Patrick Turner. Right now, he's playing the game of his life and the biggest game for USC thus far this season. Second out of five. This is Chauncey Washington and a great tackle. Slipping under everybody was Walt Thurman to make the stop on Washington. Loss of about a yard, maybe two. Seemed like Chauncey Washington missed the hole. He had Drew Radovich pulling around. He needed to make a cutback a little bit earlier, trying to take it outside, and that's where those corners can get to your legs. That's exactly what happened. So now it'll be third and seven. We have a momentary stoppage here. Baker, nothing if not tough. He's been having a hard time all year. It's just like his body has not seemed right, and many people claim that Baker is the best offensive lineman in college football, but he has certainly been banged up all year. Nabili comes to the near side again. Straight back goes Sanchez. Throws wide open Davis in the middle of the field. First down. Sanchez finding receivers wide open on crucial downs. Found Davis right there. First catch of the day for Davis, but a big one. And you're starting to see the confidence of this SC offense swell as they let the young quarterback drop back, stand strong, and deliver that football. Fine protection by the offensive line, even with their best player going out on the previous play, Sam Baker. And Davis finding a spot and laying down. First down at the 38-yard line of Oregon. Straight ahead is Washington into the secondary inside the 30. About a yard short of a first down. Pick up a nine. John Bacon on the tackle. And this is saying a lot about the character of this USC team. On the road in the most hostile stadium, many argue, in college football. Just had a devastating turnover. Just gave up the touchdown. Here they come back on offense and put together a very impressive drive, winning on third down going down the field with Mark Sanchez leading the way. Second and short. Two tight ends. And Sanchez going to go up. Steps up. Throws. Intercepted. Picked off by Harper. Harper still on his feet at the 40. Steps outside 35. At the 40. Looking for a block. And caught from behind at the 42-yard line by Ronald Johnson. Huge play. Just when the youngster looks very poised, he goes to a often unused tight end, often used in the blocking game, but Dale Thompson not really thrown to a whole lot. Sanchez trying to find him. He's done a great job of distributing the ball to different people since he's been playing. This time, trying to get the ball to Thompson. It's underneath him. Actually, that's Anthony McCoy. Only two receptions on the year. Sanchez trying to find the young tight end. Matthew Harper taking advantage of the ball behind him. Sometimes when you throw the ball to guys that don't expect it very often, they don't really know how to come back or fight for that football, but that ball was behind McCoy. And again to Stewart. Stewart trying to get a little room. Slips by one man. Gets the midfield, and he be first down on a great effort after he had been stopped. What a play by Stewart on the last play of the third quarter. A pickup of 15 yards on the play and a first down as the third quarter comes to an end. USC came into this game minus three in giveaways, takeaways, and it's reared its ugly head again. Well, these turnovers in the second half for USC are apocalyptic for them. Every play in a big game like this is huge. And when you turn the ball over on a drive like that, and then Oregon just converts a giant third down with Jonathan Stewart, you're in trouble. And the Trojans could be in trouble right now, Barry. Stewart not a ball game right now. Crenshaw is the running back behind Dixon. Pump fake this time. Now Dixon throws and wide open for the catch of the big gator is Flugrad. Flugrad still on his feet to the 30-yard line. Pump 
fake, I think, is what gave Flugrad the extra yardage, a gain of 17. Taylor Mays makes the stop on a first down at the USC 30-yard line. Giant pump fake for Fixon, too. Brought the ball all the way down to his hip. You don't see that very often. And Flugrad, 172-pound coach's kid, true freshman, get behind Garen Strong with a good block. And but tricky lady his way. Ooh, Hank Stram. I know he's an old partner here. Hank Stram. That in. A 34 toss power trap. Dixon give to Stewart. Stewart looking for a place to go and got something out of nothing. A gain of about two. Cedric Ellis on the stop for the Trojans. Well, this was the play that made this drive third and long for the Ducks, and you see the misdirection there, the handoff counteraction, and Stewart just doing it all himself. Five, six, seven, eight Trojans get hands on him before he gets the first down, and the power and speed and tenacity of Stewart is unreal. There's Flugard again on the swing pass. He'll get it down about the 11-yard line, only a game of about two. Kevin Ellison makes the stop. Actually, that was a lateral. The ball was thrown backward. It's gonna be third down and six. And you're starting to see Oregon doing the things they were doing in the first half to this USC defense. Going sideline to sideline, making them chase, making them move, making them run, spread the Trojans out, and then running upfield. This time they bring Williams to the near side. Two wide outs to the long side of the field. Third and six, big play. Dixon straight back. Now he steps up, he'll run, he's got more. First down at the three-yard line. You know, what you got to love about Dixon, there's no hesitation. Once that decision is made, he's gone. And that's what quarterback is all about, making quick decisions. And Dixon is showing a lot of toughness in this football game because he is taking monster hits from monster players on that USC defense and popping back up. He is not a big guy. 6'4", very tall, but only 205 pounds. You see those skinny legs. They get gone. Big touchdown. Well done, short. They're going to mark it at the one-yard line. And Dixon kept it. It was a repeat, really, of the first touchdown run. There you see. That's a, one of the better fakes you're ever going to see in football. Pushing at Malaluga, getting there late. And Dixon wanting it desperately. And Dixon, I think, reaching across the goal line. There is no sign yet from the officials. And they're going to say it's short. Oregon going very fast here inside the five-yard line. Lining up right away and trying to catch that USC defense off guard. The ball... Literally, well, there you see, about four inches from the end zone. Dixon to Stewart to the end zone. Touchdown, Ducks! The Ducks overcame their two turnovers and special teams in the first half. USC has not been as fortunate here in the second half with the turnovers that they have given to the Ducks. Jonathan Stewart getting headed in the right direction, rolling to the right side. Jeff Schwartz with a great block, looking a lot better than he did when they pitched him the ball. And a big time touchdown for the Ducks. Put some distance between them and the Trojans. Try for point is up and good. It's a 24 to 7 lead. 24 to 10, Oregon over USC with 11.39 remaining to be played. Oregon will kick it away. Reed and Ronald Johnson, the deep end for Southern California. And this one is driven. There'll be no return. Sanchez throws for Turner, is out of bounds. 
Well, Mark Sanchez was the big question going into this game. How's he going to react in his second start on the road in his career, in his first Pac-10 start on the road? John David Booty kind of waiting in the wings. And no one knows what's going to happen next week with the USC quarterback situation. Could be miraculously that Booty's finger heals right away. Second down and 10. Deep drop this time. Sanchez steps up. Rifles caught by Hazelton at the 33-yard line. Patrick Chung makes the stop. Good throw by Sanchez. And if somehow Sanchez can get them downfield, that time Big Chung, 19-yard gain. If he can get them downfield and into the end zone, this game becomes a lot more interesting down the stretch. But it's got to happen fast. Desmond Reed is the tailback. Short drop. Now Sanchez looking deep, throws for Hazelton, makes the catch. I thought Hazelton got away with a push off, to tell you the truth. Well, you got to do what you got to do when it comes down to this part of the game. Jerry is burned and Hazelton going at it. And it did look like at the last second, Hazelton got freed up. Let's take a look at it. Hazelton kind of running a post and then to the corner and does get both hands on Bird and frees himself up. Not called. Nice throw by Mark Sanchez. In a 28. Don't go anywhere yet. Ball at the 38-yard line. Sanchez with all day to throw it. Over the middle. Caught by Turner. First down at the 14-yard line. Sanchez delivering three outstanding balls in a row here. And just under five minutes left in this football game. Again, USC has got to get into the end zone. And then it's really on a crack. The ball just inside the 15. Sanchez throws for the end zone to Osbury. He's got it. Touchdown Trojans. Flag down. But I think that's going to be interference against Oregon. Osbury, a very big receiver. 6'4", 225, redshirt freshman. Out of Labor, California. That's on the defense, number six. Penalties declined. Touchdown. Well, that happened in a hurry. This game just turned on a dime. That's by far the most impressive Mark Sanchez has looked as the USC quarterback stepping up on the road and delivering that ball perfectly to Osbury. It didn't even look like he was ready for it. It just fell into his lap. Beautifully thrown ball. Four straight great balls from Mark Sanchez. 85 yards in 48 seconds. And just like that, it is a seven-point ball game. He all of a sudden it's a ball game here. Mark Sanchez stepping up in a big way there and just picking apart that duck secondary, finding Turner, finding Hazelton, and finding Osbury in the end zone for the big touchdown. First touchdown of the year for David Osbury. And it's kind of taking the air out of the stadium for the moment, too. This kick is going to be headed for Alston at the 10 yard line. Alston to the 20 and stopped as he crosses the 25. So now Oregon's going to have to do a little business on the offensive end and they don't on first down as Stewart is stopped after a gate of not more than a yard. Lawrence Jackson, who's come up big in this game, makes the stop on Stewart. It'll be second and nine. On the last series, Lawrence Jackson, when Oregon was being more conservative, got some good pressure on Dixon that time. Got some big paws on Stewart. Well, you want to start talking about dramatic comebacks. You only have to look back as far as Thursday night when Boston College came back against Virginia Tech to win the game in the last couple of minutes. This is Stewart with a gain of about three more. It's going to be third down and five. Fili Moala on the tackle that time. Well, Oregon in this situation when in the last series they were using time on the play clock, they don't have to call conservative plays, but they do continue to have to run that clock, and they're not doing that. They're still running their no huddle and trying to go a little faster. Trojans have two timeouts. Oregon only has one timeout remaining. Dixon going to throw. Blitz comes. Dixon throws. Incomplete off the hands of Williams. Very catchable ball, hit him right in the hand. On into the evening with Arizona State and California. Meanwhile, there's still a ball game going on here. Oregon has got to give it back to USC. A short, wobbly punt. McKnight handles it the 31-yard line, and it's stopped immediately. 
More time, but they really hurt themselves there with that penalty. Can Sanchez do it again and start finding those receivers? We will see. Stephon Johnson will be the tailback. Three wide receivers. Give is to Stephon Johnson. He gets a little something across the 20 to about the 23 yard line. He picked up about six yards on the play. Ajiman makes the tackle, but pretty good line push by the Trojans. And this has been a team that struggled a little bit with their identity this football season, the USC Trojans. This is the definitive drive of the season for Pete Carroll's team. Give again to Johnson, stopped in the backfield this time by Walter Thurman. Great penetration and a sure tackle. People are going to wonder about that play call. First down with the run. That was that was understandable that time. Giving it to Stephon Johnson again and losing yardage. Didn't work out as well. Now Reed comes into the backfield. Johnson leaves. Third down and five. Huge play right here. Straight back Sanchez with time. Throws caught by Hazelton. And he's going to be close, but I think short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard, I think. Jerome Boyd makes the tackle. Hazelton that time doing a good job of slithering forward. Sanchez doing a good job of finding him, working his progression. And here comes the down of the year both these football teams so far. No question about it. Oregon has been very effective on fourth downs defensively. Look out for that quarterback sneak. We talked about it earlier in the game. Mark Sanchez very effective taking it himself. They got a yard to go. The pitch this time to McKnight. First down and plenty more. Still on his feet at the 32 yard line. And the Trojans' drive continues a gain of seven. They fake the dive to Havili. That's the play he fumbled on on third down in the third quarter that really changed this football game. That time they fake the dive and flip it outside, sucking the defensive end in. Very, very good call by Steve Sarkisi and USC Bosnian Coffins coordinator. First down at the 33. There's a screen for McKnight. McKnight tries to bounce it outside, now cuts back. Runs into the umpire and is stopped as he gets to about the 37-yard line. Pick up a four. Reed and Boyd on the tackle defensively for Oregon. USC has one timeout remaining. Sanchez straight back. Steps up, throws. Hazelton has it. Cracked as he gets the 47-yard line, but he hangs on. Hodgman and Harper really stuck him, but a first down for the Trojans. All three wide receivers for USC who have been much maligned this football season. Stepping up huge, Osbury, Hazelton, and Turner. Short drop this time. Sanchez... Bounces it outside. Now he's going to run, try to head for the sidelines. Dives out of bounds to stop the clock. A gain of two. Pretty heady play by Sanchez. 38 seconds remaining. And when Sanchez is going well, you can kind of feel the energy that he brings to this USC offense. And he is truly bringing a sense of urgency here at the end of the game, trying desperately to tie it up. Dives out of bounds and makes the right play. USC's dominant stretch of five years in Division I football is really on the line here with this drive. They have one timeout remaining, so they can throw the ball over the middle and call a timeout and save some time. Seven-step drop this time, and he throws to the sideline. Davis can't hang on. At this point in the game, incomplete passes are not bad for USC as long as they're not on fourth down and you turn it back over to Oregon. That stops the clock and allows them to huddle up and call another play. Really, Barry, this seems to be the most competitive top half of the Pac-10 we've seen in years. No question about it. I think it almost goes beyond the top half, to tell you the truth. I don't think anybody right now particularly wants to play Oregon State. <laughs> they're looking pretty good and Stanford's on the cut. Third down. 
three-man rush for the Ducks. Sanchez throws to McKnight. He's got the first down. They, they are not apparently going to call their last time out right here. And McKnight could not get off the field there. He wanted to. He's limping. He's lined up out wide. And they're just going to spike the ball anyway. They yeah. had to do that in order to get McKnight off the field. Reed will come back in. They still have a timeout remaining. It's second down. The ball's at the 33-yard line. They don't need to use the sideline exclusively. Sanchez straight back again with time. Throws over the middle. Intercepted. Harper has another one. Harper at the 40. Harper steps out of bounds in this game for all intent is over. One of the oldest rules in quarterbacking, they tell you, don't throw the ball late over the middle. Sanchez waiting a little too long, maybe a little too confident in that strong arm. Tries to fire it in there, and Harper makes it pay for the second time in the second half. The hero of this football game for the Oregon Ducks, stepping right in front of Fred Davis, who's had a subpar afternoon. Harper is the man in Eugene tonight. It's in his genes. Willie Harper, of course, former All-American at Nebraska, played the NFL for many years. His dad got to be very proud of his son Matthew today. And Dixon takes a knee, and this one's in the books. SC could still stop the clock once, and they will do it. So it's not over yet, so they're going to have to get the fans off the field, even though Dixon has the football and is running off the field. And now a fan stops and says, you got to go back out there. Do this one more time. And this is a different football team we have seen from USC over the years. They did not go down easy, but that final turnover three in the second half ended the game, and the Oregon Ducks hang on at home. Fantastic performance by Mike Bellotti's team, in particular his defense. The offense we expected to be great, but the defense doing a great job coming up with those turnovers, Barry. Absolutely, and I think that's what's going to be talked about nationally is about their defense. This time it is over. Trojans can't stop the clock. Student section pouring onto the field. And there is joy reigning supreme here at Autzen Stadium. No question about it. Oregon is still very relevant now in the national race, in the BCS race. Oregon is still a team to beat nationally and a team to watch. USC, now the best they can really hope for is the Holiday Bowl because the way the Pac-10 is beating itself up, it doesn't look like they are going to get two teams in that BCS. I'm sure Arizona State is watching this game very closely. Should they have their way with Cal today, which is going to be easier said than done. You'll see that game tonight at 7 o'clock here on, on FSN, but uh, they come up here to play Oregon next week. Great win for the Oregon Ducks. They win it 24-17 over USC.